Welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. I am Magpie. This is Jackdaw and his mighty war dog Pigeon just having a little bark in the background. That Yes, I know. We heard you the first time. Uh, last time I said that today we would be unlocking blood magic and you know what? I'm not a liar as it turns out. We are here in Redcliffe Castle. Just about to go in and have a wee chat with Connor. And I'm just going to show you how uh, we unlock the blood mage specialisation. But first I'll just give you a wee rundown on specialisations. So, alongside your standard uh, talents and skills here, you also have, each class has four specialisations to choose from. And what the specialisations do is they unlock an extra line of um, talents for you, much like Mage does here and the Power of Blood does here. And each specialisation will also give you a little boost to uh, some of the attribute points. Uh, depending on which one you pick, so you can sort of tailor your build around uh, which specialisations you want. Now, there are four to choose from for each class. However, on each playthrough you can only pick two. Uh, your first uh, specialisation point unlocks at level 7 and the second one unlocks at level 14. I'm actually at level uh, 11, I think, 11, 12, something like that. You, But as you can see, I do not have any specialisations yet. This is because each specialisation has to be unlocked individually. Now, they don't have to be unlocked like on every playthrough. Once you've unlocked them on one playthrough, uh, they will remain unlocked across your subsequent playthroughs. The reason I don't have any unlocked at the minute is because I've installed Origins on a new computer and I haven't bothered logging into the servers yet. I don't even know if the servers still exist. I don't know if they're still a thing. Um, so my all of my things have reset, like all of my uh, achievements and stuff have reset and all of my unlocks have unset. So I've got nothing unlocked at the moment. Now, how you unlock each specialisation does vary depending on which one it is. Um, a lot of them are actually quite easy to unlock. Some of them can be unlocked by buying um, tomes from Bodan and probably a few other places. I think Spirit Healer, uh, Ranger, uh, I think you can get one for Templar as well. Uh, not all of them, but most of them, some of them anyway, have a, have a tome that you can buy and you read the tome and then you unlock the specialisation. Uh, most of them you can unlock through your companions. So if we jump over to Leliana here, you see Leliana has the Bard specialization. And if she likes you enough, she will be willing to teach you the Bard specialization. Even if you are not a rogue, you'll still be able to unlock it. She'll just sort of teach you her wily ways and then kind of assume that you'll be able to tell somebody else about it. Um, and it will also be somehow transported into the minds of your future uh, wardens through some sort of freakish form of magic. But we won't question that too much. We won't question it too much. Um, and if we jump over to Morrigan, Morrigan has Shapeshifter, so she can teach you Shapeshifter. Alistair teaches Templar, uh, Ogryn teaches Berserker, so on and so forth. So you can get them through that. Now, one or two have very specific storyline related ways of unlocking them. Uh, and they're quite well hidden as well, so you might not necessarily find them. Um, so the two in particular are Blood Mage, which we're doing today and then Reaver, which we will also be doing at some point in the future, because uh, both both are a little bit, shall we say, morally iffy. They're a bit, they're a bit questionable specialisations to have, and you have to do something a little bit special, uh, questionable in order to get them. Uh, the only other one is Arcane Warrior, which you unlock uh, in the Priscillian Forest. You get it from a long dead elf. He teaches you how to do it, <laughs> um, which you should stumble upon fairly easily in your playthrough. But we'll probably cover that as well, probably. Maybe I might do one on the Priscillian Forest. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But anyway, so today, blood magic. So, like I said, we're at the uh, Redcliffe uh, quest. And uh, we've heard that dastardly things are afoot in Redcliffe Castle. There are undead uh, spewing out into the village and all of that kind of stuff. And we're here to be all heroic and save the day and see what's wrong. However, as I've mentioned before, Jack Daw here, not the most moral character I've ever played. So if at some point along the way he maybe f gets a better offer, um, he might just forget about the whole being noble and saving the day thing and he might just, you know, possibly trade his morals for something a bit special, like perhaps blood magic. After all, last time, you might remember, he did pick up these very shiny new robes that enhance blood magic. So, you know, it would be a shame to waste them. Anyway... <laughs> We just head in, and then if we nip through into the main hall, I believe there are people waiting for us. Hello, Tegan. You look happy. Okay. All right. Oh, Tegan. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetness. Okay. 
Blimey, her sword looks a bit miserable, doesn't she? I suppose she's had a tough day. So these are our visitors. The ones you told me about, Mother. Y yes, Connor. And this is the one who defeated my soldiers. The ones I sent to reclaim my village. Yes. And now it's staring at me. What is it, Mother? I can't see it well enough. This is an elf, Connor. You... You've seen elves before. We have them here in the castle. Oh, I remember. I had their ears cut off and fed to the dogs. The dogs chewed for hours. <laughs> Shall I send it to the kennels, Mother? Connor, I beg you. Don't hurt anyone. Ma Mother? What? What's happening? Where am I? Oh, thank the Maker. Connor. Connor, can you hear me? Get away from me, fool woman. You are beginning to bore me. Grey Warden, please don't hurt my son. He is not responsible for what he does. Yes, so basic rundown is uh, Connor here has gone a little bit mental bananas due to being possessed by a demon who he made a deal with in order to save his father, uh, Al Eamon. Or Eamon, as they call him in the game, but it's 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 Eamon. If you're going to use a Celtic name, at least pronounce it properly. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm kind of tempted to go for I have no intention of hurting him, but that would be an outright lie. So um, I'm maybe just going to skirt around the issue. Yeah, I am. Here am I. <laughs> I like him better this way. <laughs> no more yelling. Now he amuses me. <laughs> Connor didn't mean to do this. It was that mage, the one who poisoned Demon. He started all this. He summoned this demon. Connor was just trying to help his father. And made a deal with the demon to do so? Foolish child. It was a fair deal. Father is alive. Just as I wanted. Now it's my turn to sit on the throne and send out armies to conquer the world. Nobody tells me what to do anymore. Nobody tells him what to do. Nobody! Ha 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 ha! Quiet, Uncle! I warned you what would happen if you kept shouting, didn't I? Yes, I did. But let's keep things civil. This man will have the audience he seeks. Tell us. What have you come here for? <laughs> Me? No reason at all. I think I'll just leave. I don't think I've ever picked that one. I wonder what he says. My, my. How rude. What shall I do, Mother? I... I don't think... Of course you don't. Ever since you sent the knights away, you do nothing but deprive me of my fun. Frankly, it's getting dull. I crave excitement and action. This man spoiled my sport by saving that stupid village, and now he'll repay me. Okay, so now we've got to fight Tegan, all right, <laughs> which is a bit of a shame, but it's fine, it's fine. He's he's important, so we'll live. Uh, what am I doing? Okay. Of course. Well, did I hit the other one? No, that would have been cool if that had like hit the other one as well. Where's Tegan? Because Tegan's the big problem. Okay. Um, poor Tegan. <laughs> he must be one of the most sort of ill-fated loved characters. Like a lot of people really like Tegan. He's very um <clears throat> he's very popular in the fandom, but bless him, he's not treated very well, particularly not in Inquisition. Um right, what am I doing? I can't use that for cat uh, <laughs> She wasn't named after this Tegan, she was named after um the Doctor Who companion from Classic Who. But uh, yes, I did in fact have a cat called Tegan. Uh, okay, I can't help thinking of her a little bit every time every time I uh, talk to Bounty. Right. Okay, oh, don't hit me with a sword, that's not very nice, I'm a mage. Mages aren't good with all, like, swordy shit. Right, okay, okay, uh, let's try not to freeze Pigeon, that wouldn't be good. There we go. Oh, he seems to be good there pretty nicely. Uh, is everybody else still alive? Yes, Lil's got a sword, so of course she has. 
<sighs> Peter just keeps your bow out like I'm modelling you as a whole archer build thing and you keep switching to your flipping swords. I mean, I wouldn't care so much if she switched back when it made sense. Because, like, I get that she gets her swords out when, you know, people come running up to her. I get that, that's sensible. But then, you know, when people are further away again, why can't she switch back? That would be great. Uh, hello. Okay, I'll just see souls just hiding in the corner over there. Most old. Unlike Tegan, the soul is definitely not one of the most loved characters, bless her heart. Okay. Marvellous. Is everybody okay? Tegan. Oh, Tegan. Are you all right? I am better now, I think. <laughs> my mind is my own again. Blessed Andraste. I would never have forgiven myself had you died. Not after I brought you here. What a fool I am. Please. Connor's not responsible for this. I mean, he kind of is. <laughs> be some way we can save him. Uh, uh, I'm not about to kill a child. Well, that is absolutely true. I am actually not going to kill a child. So, you know, we'll say that. no longer a child. He's an abomination. You! You did this to Connor! I didn't. I didn't summon any demon. I told you. Please, if you'll let me help. Help? You betrayed me! I brought you here to help my son, and in return you poisoned my husband? This is the mage you spoke of? Didn't you say he was in the dungeon? He was. I assumed the creatures had killed him by now. He must have been set free. Oh, your ear's bleeding, yeah. She's a bit screechy as all, isn't she? <laughs> um, okay, right, yes. So this is the point where Jowen enters. Now, uh, I'm probably going to just miss out all of the nonsense that they're about to talk about, and we'll just get to the end by where uh, you actually have to make the decision. So I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so I've just jumped ahead. Right, basically, we've got two options at this point. Well, okay, we've got three, but I'll cover that one separately. We've got two options. We can either kill Connor, therefore killing the demon, and wrapping up the whole sorry mess. Now, that is usually my go-to. Wasn't the thing I did on my first playthrough, but once I got to know the world of Dragon Age a little bit better, I actually figured probably the best choice all around. Uh, number two is we were let Jowen over there perform a blood magic ritual. And in that blood magic ritual, he will be able to sacrifice Lady Isolde, who has offered up her life willingly, and he will send another mage into the Fade, and that mage will confront the demon in the Fade, and theoretically fight the demon and kill it, or at least, you know, break its hold of the Connor. Theoretically. I mean, you can do that. You can totally stick to your word and fight the demon. You can also possibly, you know, it's possible that that demon may be able to offer us something that would be worth our attention, is all I'm going to say. So those are our two options. Now, there is a magic third option. There is a magic, wonderful, happy third option where nobody has to die and then they all live happily ever after, where you go to the Circle Tower and you get uh, the mages' help. And the mages come back uh, to Redcliffe with you and they do a totally non-blood magic ritual with lyrium and stuff and they can also send a mage into the fade um i prefer to pretend that that decision that uh, option doesn't actually exist because <laughs> i can't, i don't like magic options where everybody's happy and though you know nothing bad happens not in stuff like this i like i like difficult choices i like the first time i played this game i never came across that magic third option i had you know the two options i had the blood magic ritual or i had kill connor and i loved it so much that was the point where i thought oh this is the best game ever it was just like it was a proper difficult choice that i had to choose who lived and who died and you know people were going to be upset either way and it was all on me and oh i loved it so much it was such one of my like top moments in games it was up there with having to choose between Caden and Ashley in Mass Effect 1. It was just one of those moments where you think, oh, you're actually doing this to me, are you? You're actually going to make me do this. And uh, I loved it so much. And then about two or three playthroughs later, I discovered the magic third option. And honestly, I swear to God, I have never been so disappointed in all my life. But anyway, 
So yes, I'm just gonna pretend that that one doesn't exist. So yes, those are our two options. And for reasons best known to themselves, Isolde and Tegan here are perfectly happy to let me decide the fate of Connor. Don't ask me why. I mean, I'm just some random person who they met about half an hour ago who just sort of showed up. Uh, I mean, like, Isolde over here is the lady of the castle and in Arl Eamon's uh, absence, she is literally in charge. She is also Connor's mother. And yet, for some reason, she's just letting me take make the decision. I have absolutely no idea why. I mean, particularly in Jackdaw's case. Like, come on, I'm an elf, I'm a mage, and I'm a grey warden. I could not be any more controversial if I stripped naked, ran through the castle screaming profanity about Andraste, and then had sex with a goat. But for whatever reason, they are leaving it completely up to me. Now, since we are here to unlock blood magic, then uh, killing Connor is not an option. So we are going to we are not going to say there must be another way to enter the fade. We are going to let Jowen cast the ritual. Thank you. If this will save my son, then I am not afraid. Then who will go into the fade? Will it be you? Yeah, so at this point you get to choose um who you want to send into the fade. Now if you are a mage yourself, then you can go. Uh, if you are not playing as a mage, then you can't go in. It has to be a mage, so you can you can send uh, Morrigan or Wynne. Now, if you want to unlock blood magic, it has to be you. So only a mage can unlock blood magic, because you are the one who has to go in. Uh, I should point out that if you go for the third option, where you go and get the mages and they do a lyrium ritual rather than a blood ritual, uh, you can still unlock blood magic so long as you are the one entering the fade. So you don't have to go down the blood magic ritual route in order to unlock blood magic. Also, if you go down that route, if you go for the mages, uh, I think Jowen can actually be the mage that you send into the fade. I'm pretty sure, yes. You, uh, you can get them to send Jowen in for whatever reason. Uh, and whoever you send in, you will be controlling. So if you send Morrigan in, you end up controlling Morrigan. Um, but since we want to unlock blood magic, we will have to go in ourselves. You have my eternal gratitude. May the Maker go with you. Then let's... Let's get this started. Then I believe we're going to have a slightly gruesome cutscene, I think. Okay, it's a bit over dramatic, wasn't it? And here we are in the fade again. Yay, have you missed it? <laughs> we know how much everybody loves the fade, and Leliana disapproved of that. Morrigan approved. I think Morrigan disapproves if you choose her to go into the fade. I'm pretty sure that's a thing I remember. That if uh, she's the one who goes into the fade, she disapproves. But she approves of the ritual itself for, you know, reasons. I don't know. Uh, Are you, Connor? I can hear you. I'm coming. Okay, so we've got little ghosts of uh, Aemon wandering around Where and Connor. And everything's just generally a bit squiggly and Is things. There out there? Hello? Yes, I'm out here. Can you hear me, Aemon? Hello? Aemon, you okay? I don't understand. Doesn't look okay, it's does so he? Cold. I want to go home. Well, you shouldn't have made a deal with a friggin' demon then, should you? But don't worry. I'm getting you out of this alive, Connor. <laughs> if not Please, slightly possessed. Father. Okay. I really want to help you. Oh, okay. Why can't I find you? This place is so dark. Okay, and here's Eamon himself. Hello. Are you there? Have you seen my son? I can I can hear him, but I cannot find him. Uh, I've seen him around here. Turning in circles. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Eamon. I, I'm sorry, Eamon. Um, should I tell him that a demon has him trapped here? I don't feel like that's a ter uh, great idea. Uh, do you know where you are, love? Of course I do. I am, well, the castle is... It's difficult to remember. Okay. Connor calls for me, and I run to find him, yet always he eludes me. Where is Isolde? Why am I here? Oh, let's not talk about Isolde. That's... A <laughs> That's a slightly dodgy topic. I think uh, I think we'll, we'll wait a while to tell him about that one. Um, mm, uh, yes, just just don't worry, sweetness. I will find a way to help you. Okay. Then leave me to find my son, Connor. Where are you? Speak to me, lad. Okay. Well, <laughs> he's not terribly happy, but it's all right. We're going to make it all okay. Well, mostly okay. We're going to make it 
mostly. Okay, oh, okay, okay. which one of those do you reckon is the Black here? City? It's Where the big I? one, isn't it? Is it not the really big one Mother. that has, like, things Mother. coming off it? Anyone? Is it up there? Uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, yes, through the portal. Uh, ooh, creepy, okay. Oh, there it is, with all of its weird things coming off it. I always wonder what the weird things coming off it are. I mean, they look like they're islands tethered to it, don't they? Uh, interesting. Um, right, okay. Uh, Connor should be around here somewhere. There you are, sweetness. Oh, you all right, Connor? Who are you? Are you the one that made father ill? Tell me now. No, I did not make your father ill. How do I know that? You could be a liar. You could be a demon. Well, if only you were this mistrustful of the first demon. <laughs> um, okay, and you could be a guardian of this realm meant to confuse. All right, okay. All right, um, let's just try and get him to trust me. No, you're here to hurt father. I know it. I won't let you. Oh, there she is. Oh, all right. Hello. You okay? Oh, I think we have to fight her now. Okay, okay. Well. She's not too tough, I don't think. <laughs> Sorry, love, did that hurt? Yeah, that sounded like it hurt. Okay, there she goes. Well, believe it or not, that was not the final battle. <laughs> that was just a little taste. Oh, there's a little teddy bear. Oh, oh, Connie, you dropped your teddy. Oh. Oh, there's nothing sadder than an abandoned teddy bear. Oh, I always hate it. You know when, like, van drivers put teddy bears on the front of their vans and they get all wet and stuff in the rain and they get mud splattered on them? Why would you do that to a teddy? That's, like, that's a violation of teddy rights. Anyway, uh, okay, I think if we head back, because it's the fade and everything's all squiggly, we'll probably find ourselves in a different place if we go back the way we came. Probably. Uh... You! Woo. You're yes. the one making father sick. No, I'm not. Stop I'll shouting at me. You can't stop me. I'm here to help. I'm the saviour. You have to get out. I'm a hero, Am I mostly. Am I dreaming? I don't understand any of this. Well, you're kind of both. I think. I think you're sort of held at the point of death, maybe. Mm. Hello. Why do you keep hurting me? Why are you trying to stop me? Well. <laughs> Be gone, demon, and it beat me no further. That seems a little bit... Okay, let's say that. You will not find what you seek. Turn back now. I will drive you out. Yep. Oh, she's got a friend this time. Okay. Well, he looks like the freezable kind of friend. Yep, there we go. <laughs> oh, I do love being a mage <laughs> in their origins. You're so, so stupidly powerful. Um, and then we jump to the Majors and in Inquisition. <laughs> Let's not talk about the Majors and in Inquisition, all right? Right. Um, I'll stop you. I will. How are you going to do that, sweetness? You're possessed by a demon. All Please right. Forgive me. Yeah. Please forgive me. Oh, I'll we'll forgive you. Probably, maybe. I mean, you were a bit stupid, but you know. Oh, hang on a minute. I need to drink. My voice is really knacky the day. I do apologise. Um, I think it's possibly in shock since I've uh, recorded the entire Elite Force series over the past couple of days. Uh, oh, Connor, there you are again. Ooh, floating things. Ooh, are they bird cages? Aww. Uh, hey, Connor, I'm back. You okay? Father wonders, seeking me, trapped within my web. All is as it should be. Why must you interfere? Because I'm a protagonist and interfering is what I do. Connor invited her to come, and they struck a bargain. She has every right to do as she wishes. No, it is time for you to go now. Do not persist, or things will go very badly for you. I just realised that whoever was talking there, they were talking about themselves in the third person. <laughs> Whether it was Connor or her, definitely the third person. Oh, you've got two rage demons this time. Oh, I am impressed. Hello! Um, I wonder if I can get both of you. And I've got no companions to worry about freezing, so you know, I'm not going to be accidentally freezing wind like I always seem to. Uh, I don't know why it's always wind who gets it, but it seems to be pretty much always win. Um, uh, I 
did that get you? That got you. Great. Let's just give you a bit of a punch in the face. Marvellous. And you can go down, and you can go down, and I'm a little bit on fire, but it should be okay. There we go. No bother at all. I wonder if there's any kind of law explanation for why demons always seem to be so much bloody weaker in the Fade. You think it would be the other way around, don't wouldn't you? But I like in the actual uh, Circle Tower Fade mission, and here, because you're on your own both times, just like stupidly weak for some reason. Ooh, it saved my game. I'm assuming this is the big one. Hello. Very well. No more illusions. Now we meet face to face. You see my and stand in my domain. It is here I am most powerful. And yet I have no wish to engage your power, nor should you be so eager to engage mine. Perhaps we should converse instead? Okay, so this is the point where Jackdaw... Right, I'm gonna say that Jackdaw, up until now, had the best of intentions. He came in here, perfectly willing to fight the demon, save the day, be the hero. Then a sexy desire demon showed up and asked to talk. And if there's one thing Jackdaw can't resist, it's a sexy desire demon. So I'm willing to talk. Ah, good. I prefer reasonable negotiation whenever possible. Your goal is for me to release the boy's soul. Is that right? Yes, that is indeed right. What if you could persuade me to leave voluntarily? No fuss, no bloodshed. Let me make a proposition then. I abandon the boy, for now. But I retain the contract he and I made. And many years from now, I may return and claim what is mine. This will be long after whatever you want is done. In exchange, I will provide something of value to you. Something you desire. What say you? Okay, so yes, basically what we're agreeing to is we're going to make a deal with her, she's going to give us something, and then she's going to leave. And then, at some point in the future, she'll come back. Now, obviously, if you fight her, I don't think, I think there's, um, I, I'm a bit hazy on the law, but I'm pretty sure, like, demons and spirits and things can't actually be killed. They can just sort of be driven back into the deepest depths of the Fade, where they become incredibly weak. And I think at some point they can sort of be reborn and eventually come back. But if we do fight her and kill her, you know, she will more or less be gone. But if we just let her leave then she'll be able to come back at a later date when I'm out of the way and there's no nasty, inconvenient protagonists around to stop her and she will reclaim Connor's mind for her own. So if we just ask her to elaborate a little bit. I offer much. Power, knowledge, pleasure. What is it you desire? There we have it, arcane secrets. I want to specialize in blood magic. Uh, you can also say, I'll take pleasure's demon, show me what you've got, at which point you get a very ambiguous cutscene. I can't quite remember what happens. I can't even remember if you get like a kiss out of it or anything. I think you might just see her going towards him. I'm not entirely certain, but you know, it's certainly implied that you have some phenomenal demon sex. Oh, I want the love of those around me. Oh, now is that... Does that get your approval up? Oh, I'm not sure. That might just like get your approval up with all of your companions. I don't know. Uh, keep it simple, something to increase my talents. That is, that gets you a talent point. Um, I had it in my head that she could give you gold as well, but apparently not. Uh, I suppose that wouldn't make much sense, would it? I mean, we're in the fade. So obviously the blood magic is the one we're going for. Then it is a deal. You'll have what you desire, and I'll leave as if destroyed. For now. I wish you luck, dear creature. You shall certainly need it. Ooh, all right, that was creepy and sinister. I do love a desire demon. Oh yes, this is the aftermath of Redcliffe's battle as well. <laughs> and everybody's very sad because I didn't manage to save everyone. I saved Sir Perth. And look, I saved Connor. I was good, I promise. <sighs> yeah, apparently you get, a, if you manage to do the whole thing and nobody dies, like literally no one, no, not even any members of the militia or anything like that. Um, you get a special cutscene where, you know, there's none of this because everyone survived. I have never managed that. Uh, there is an entire achievement around it and I've never done it. I don't know how you even would. I was thinking of doing it as a challenge video. Um, 
which I might do, but I'm not <laughs> convinced I'll succeed, because seriously, I've got no idea how you would ever do that. How would you get through the entire battle without anybody dying? How is that even possible? So oh, it is Tegan, over. you okay? You look a bit sad. Connor is his old self. Well, he kind of. He does not seem to remember anything, which is a blessing. I suppose we will need to send him to the Circle of Magi's Tower for training once the war is over. It's so odd to think of the boy as a mage, of all things. Should Eamon recover? I'm not sure how I will tell him of all this. Isolde is dead, yet her sacrifice saved their son. Yeah, but to be fair, she was quite annoying. <laughs> he performed the ritual and did not deceive us. In a way, he saved Connor's life even though he killed Isolde. I am unsure what to make of this. We will hold him for Eamon to decide his fate. If he doesn't recover, Jowan's fate is sealed. What do you think? Why the hell are you asking me? I'm literally just some random elf who rocked up like half an hour ago. <laughs> um, um, oh, what would Jackdaw say? I don't know. I mean, I get the impression Jackdaw didn't like Jowan much. Mostly just because I don't like Jowan much. <laughs> you know what? Just do whatever you want. I'm not fussed. Very well. I shall have the mage imprisoned again for now. But our task is not done yet. Whatever the demon did to my brother, it seems to have spared his life, but he remains comatose. We cannot wake him. As odd as it may seem, the quest Isolde sent the knights on may be our only hope. We must find the urn of sacred ashes. I would rather not rely on superstition and legend, but Isolde believed that the relic would cure Eamon, and I am desperate. There is a scholar in Denerim, Brother Genetivi. He has been trying to discover the urn's location for several years now. The knights were unable to locate him, but perhaps you can do better than they. I must go to the hall and begin rebuilding. I wish you luck, and may the Maker go with you. Oh, thank you, Tegan. I've always liked you. Oh, and lots of people. Oh, I've leveled up. Perfect. Okay. So, there it is. Blood magic. So these are the specializations. You can see it's the only one I've got unlocked, so if we just go for that. Um, and then we'll plow everything into magic. And here we go. So we've got blood magic. For as long as this mode is active, the blood mage sacrifices health to power spells instead of expending mana, but effects that heal the blood mage are much less effective than normal. And then we have blood sacrifice. The blood mage sucks the life force from an ally, <laughs> healing the caster but potentially killing the ally. This healing is not affected by the healing penalty of blood magic. And then we have blood wound. The blood of all hostile targets in the area boils within their veins, inflicting severe damage. Targets stand twitching, unable to move unless they pass a physical resistance check. Creatures without blood are immune, so that would be things like golems and the like. And blood control. Oh, that's a really cool picture. That's like a little puppet. Oh, that's really nice. The blood mage forcibly controls the target's blood, making the target an ally of the caster unless it passes a mental resistance check. If the target resists, it instead takes great damage from the manipulation of its blood. Creatures without blood are immune. So yes, that's basically the Imperial curse over there. But only if it backfires, it ends up doing a hell of a lot of damage. So blood magic, blood magic is insanely fun. Uh, it's also insanely powerful if used correctly. Like I say, it draws from uh, your health rather than your mana, which, so long as you're leveled up right, isn't too much of a problem. I mean, as a mage, you're going to be back from the action. You're not going to be the target all that much. That, that's what your warrior is there for. Your warrior is there to take all of the hits, to sort of, you know, be big and bad and threatening. And um, your mage should just be able to hide on the back lines and not incur too much... Uh, trouble. So if we just go and select that, and Jackdaw is now a blood mage, because of course he is, because he's Jackdaw. And I think if we go through and have a wee look-see with Connor, aww, aww, oh, it's all these little toys, and you're a, you're a servant, hello servant. I wonder what happened to all the other castle servants that were here. Well... Do you think they all died? Or did they run away? Oh, I think they definitely ran away. I think that's it. I think there's absolutely zero chance that they got turned into horrific undead abominations and then went and ravaged the village. That's not... Stop digging up carpets, pigeon. We talked about this back in the Circle Tower, for heaven's sake. Yes, we can just go and have a wee chat with Connor. Hello, Connor. Are you all right? You're the one who saved me. Yes, yes, I totally saved you. I'm a good person. Then, thank you. You're welcome. Father always said to remember to thank people who do nice things for you. Yes, I did I a very good thing. Here. Nobody will tell me how she died. They say I'll find out when I'm older. Uh, I'm not convinced you will, you know. Um, I imagine it'll become one of those sort of 
family secrets that uh, never really gets fully explained. I think every family has those things. Uh, oh, he's got little wooden horses. Oh, that's quite cute. Actually, I don't think they are teddy bears. I think they're little soldiers. Hmm. Do you have a teddy bear? You must have a teddy bear. Oh, if he doesn't have a teddy bear, that'll be how the demon got in because everybody knows that teddy bears keep monsters away. Everybody knows that. So, Jack Door is now a blood mage, and that is how you unlock the blood mage specialization. Probably quite a short video, eh, uh, at least by my standards. <laughs> I do know my videos tend to be quite long, uh, but I think there's one probably, probably a bit of a shorter one. So, uh, that's all I've got for you, really. And uh, next week, no idea. I suppose I'll have to think of something. Hopefully. I'm just busy googling something that I should have looked up before I started the video. Hold on a minute. <laughs> just give me two seconds.